Kia ora everyone and welcome to the IWG Inspire Showcase. It's my privilege this morning to welcome Clay Hawke and Monique Mahipema, representatives of the Mana Whenua of Ngāti Whātua, Ōrāke, to lead us in a mihi whakato today. Tēnā koe, sir. Iaku nui, iaku rahi, ko rā mene mene mai nei, nā rungi te whakaaro ko tahi, nau mai, whakapiri mai, uh, nau mai, hara mai. Kaitou i ngā wahi ne toa, uh, i ngā wahi ne kaha, o te awaha kina kina, i ngā mārei kura, i ngā wahi ne pukenga nui, e hine, e hine mā e ko mā, kaitou katoa ko hono mai ki tēnei whakaturangi a ipurangi. Nau mai, hara mai, i ngā iwi wah maha, i ngā mātā waka o ngā haue whā, puta no te motu, tēnā kauta. Nau mai, piki mai, kake mai, hara mai, ki tāmaki makaurau Auckland, uh, ki Aotearoa New Zealand. Te kainga o ngā kiwi, me te kainga o ngā iwi Māori. Ka nui ngā mihi mai oha, ki a kauta katoa, aha ko no hia, aha ko ko wai. O tēnei mātou te hau kainga, te ahikāroa o tāmaki makaurau, e fita fita tonu ana i ngā ahi, a te kauau, te tūmu whakarai o tāmaki. Whātua nuku, whātua rangi, whātua ki yuta, whātua ki tai, a nei ngā te whātua heru hapai, e mihi atu nei ki a kauta katoa. I ngā ihu pūmanoa, i ngā hautipua, i ngā manu māreikura, a e te hunga mātakitaki, a hakoa no hia, a hakoa ko ai, no mai, are mai. Maria mai o koutou pūkenga, a e koutou whiako o koutou mātauranga, ki tēnei whakaminenga o tātou. Are are mai o koutou tāringa, a whakarongo pikari ki ngā manu kōrero, ki ngā manu tautohito. A, ko tētahi, a, ko tā, tākuta Farah Pāma, uh, no tai nui ngā te mani a poto, uh, e, te, e te wahi nei toa, uh, tēnā koe e whāra, ngā mihi nui ki a koe, uh, ka huri hoki ngā mihi ki a Diane Culver, uh, no Kanata, uh, te tahi kai kōrero, me te kai kōrero tua, tua toru ko Robin Cockburn. Ka nui te mihi ki a kauta katoa uh, e ngā kai kōrero o te rā nei. Uh, me te wahi nei pūrotu, te MC, uh, o te rā New Zealand Olympian uh, Sarah Cowley Ross, ka nui te mihi ki a koe uh, me tō mahi. Nō reira e te iwi, uh, he honore nui mō mātou o Ngāti Whātua o Rākei, uh, nō tāmaki makaurau New Zealand, te mihi atu ki a koutou. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora. He aha te hawa wara mai, he tiu he rā ki nāna i a mai te pū, pūtara ki hiki uta e tiki nā tu e au, te kātū ko i a te pau, te pau whakai rokātū, ki wai te mātai o ku wai rangi e. The Manawhenua tribe of Tamaki Makoto, Auckland. We'd like to welcome you all here uh, to this wonderful occasion. You find it productive and fruitful, and we wish you all a beautiful morning. So thank you very much, and I'll hand it back over to Sarah Crowley Ross. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora. Tēnā koe, mālo le soifua. Uh, thank you very much to Clay Hawk, Manoa Whenua, representative of Ngāti Whātua, o Rākei, for his mihi whakatau today, supported by Monique Mai, Mahi Pima for the Waiata song that followed. Wonderful. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa, ko Sarah Cowley Ross aho, no Rotorua aho, anari no Samoa, ukutukana. Ke Timero Tuku Kainga e Naine. My name is Sarah Cowley Ross. I call Rotorua home and I acknowledge my Samoan ancestry and where I live now with my family in Timero. I am your Kai Fakataki, your MC today, and it's a real privilege to welcome you to our global community of action, Action of to the Inspire Showcase, the International Working Group on Women in Sport event, delivered by the current IWG Secretariat, Women in Sport, Aotearoa, Nā Wahineha Kinakina or Aotearoa. 
We acknowledge the Hokainga and Tamaki Makoto, Auckland, and particularly Ngāti Whātua Orake as kaitiaki, as guardian of where Women in Sport Aotearoa is located. And where the Inspire Showcase is being delivered live from today. Now, the Inspire Short Showcase is an extension of the upcoming 8th IWG World Conference on Women in Sport, due to take place right here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, from the 14th to the 17th of November. I'll remind you of that date throughout the morning, uh, but I hope you've already got it locked and loaded. Uh, registrations are open, and whether you're joining us in person or virtually, so there's a pass to suit you. Group and delegation registrations are also available, and to learn more about how to participate, click on the link we've just posted in the chat just now. Today is about giving you a taster of the virtual experience that will be delivered during the World Conference. The interactive tools, facilitated workshops and online conversations that will take place today is a sample of what to expect come November. Now, in the next 60 minutes, I encourage you to take advantage of the various tools that can enrich your experience with the speakers, facilitators and global participants that have joined us today. We'd like to now thank the wonderful people that have helped support uh, putting on this Inspire Showcase this morning. So a huge thank you, uh, Namahi to Sport New Zealand, Ahi Aotearoa, Spark Sport, Taki, Taki Auckland Unlimited, the International Olympic Committee, the Māori Women's Development Incorporated, Tourism New Zealand, the New Zealand Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, the US State Department, Trans Tasman Business Circle, Simpson Gresson, and to all our friends and allies for supporting today's learning and networking event and our journey to the IWG World Conference. Now today I will be guiding you through an esteemed collective of speakers, which includes Dr. Farah Palmer, Dr. Diane Culver, and Robin Coburn. In Maori mythology, Mare Kura, apologies, Mare Kura are the supreme goddesses of the 12th heaven. The 12th heaven is all female and the highest of all spiritual realms. To acknowledge their contribution and recognise the influence that they have in different spheres, today our speakers will be referred to as Mare Kura. They will speak for eight minutes each and this will be followed by a facilitated workshop. Now in these workshops, you will get to share what you have learned and how it applies to your context. Explore the issues and find solutions as a community together to create positive change for women and girls in sport and physical activity. Now, just a few housekeeping items uh, from me. Now, the discussion forum, which is, is going off, which is great, is our chat room. So if you hear something that you like, please let us know in the chat. In fact, let's give it a go now. I know some of you are already uh, mentioning where you're dialing in from, but if you haven't done that already, I'd love for you to jump over to the discussion forum and uh, pop that in now. Now today, our uh, Mare Kura will be speaking in English, but if you would like to view today's sessions in French or Spanish, when I tell you to, please, you will need to select the session of your preferred language back on your timeline. Now, due to the free flowing nature of the workshop discussions, they will only be in English today for ease, but you're still able to join a workshop and participate in the discussion after your session is finished. The workshops will open at 9.10 a.m. New Zealand time, and we will prompt you via the discussion forum. Wonderful to see all everyone joining in from around the world today. Now, if you're having any technical troubles, we have live support for you in place. Now, simply go to the live support icon at the top right of the platform. Now, another interesting function you can access is the meeting hub, and you'll see this listed as an option to the right. This enables you to connect with people separate to today's program and is a great place to make new, correct, uh, new connections. So we're just about to get started. To all our French and Spanish participants, you can now leave this window and select the Inspire Showcase in your preferred language from the timeline to start watching the three Maracura speakers. 
Our first session today will start with a bang, and that's from Dr. Farah Palmer. Now, Farah's endeavours include a significant and long-standing contribution to a broad range of critical outcome areas, including Māori business and management, women's leadership, women in sport, governance, Māori education, akona Māori success, and the impact of her work and leadership extending nationally and internationally. Now, Farah captained the Black Ferns, our New Zealand women's rugby team, for 10 years and was inducted into the IRB, now World Rugby, Hall of Fame in 2014. In 2016, the New Zealand Women's Provincial Rugby Championship was renamed the Farah Palmer Cup in honour of her achievements, leadership and contribution to the advancement of women's rugby. In 2016, Farah became the first female member of the New Zealand Rugby Board and in 2021 was appointed as the first ever Deputy Chair and is the current Chair of the New Zealand Māori Rugby Board, having served on the board since 2007. She's a current board member of Sport New Zealand. Welcome to the Inspire Showcase, our first Marekura, Farah Palmer. Here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, when people first meet, you might hear them ask, Nō Heakwe, where are you from? This is an opportunity to let people know who you are by sharing your connections with people and places that are important to you. Nō reira, nō hea o, where am I from? Ko Ruby hoia rawa, ko Dan King, o ku tūpuna, ko Ngāti Manyapoto, ko Waikoto, o ku iwi, Ko tainui tōku waka, ko mōkau kuhunui tōku marae, nō pio pio au. Kei te noho au ki papai oia e nāia nei, ko whara rangi koeapa pāma ahau. I grew up with my Māori grandparents, who descend from Ngāti Manipoto and Waikato tribes that came, that came to Aotearoa on the tainui waka. I grew up in a rural village called Pio Pio with my Māori grandparents and mother, down the hill from our marae or meeting house named Moko Kohunui. I now live in Palmerston North with my husband and two children. My middle name is Rangi Koepa, which was my great grandmother's name on my Koro's side. If you ask people today who is Farah Palmer, they might refer to my public persona as a member of the Black Ferns, as was mentioned for 10 years, captaining them to three World Cups. I also became the first woman on the New Zealand Rugby Board and some people ask if I was named after the Farah Palmer Cup. Throughout my journey in leadership, I've grappled with what good leadership looks like in academia, sport, business, on the field, and in the boardroom. Have I figured it out? No. I have a strong sense of becoming rather than being an effective leader. Through trial and error, observation and research, a mana wahine perspective, feels most authentic to me, and I refer to aspects of wayfinding leadership, being a tempered radical and learning to be vulnerable yet strong. I want to share with you the Black Ferns Haka composed by Fetu Tipiwai that refers to three Atua Wahine, female Māori gods, who are the main signposts of my leadership approach so far. Ko wangahine, ko wangahine. Ko ngā mamaku ingunguru ne hi yo o awe ha ko hine ahu one ko hine titama ko hine nui te po kite fai ao kite ao marama e. Who are these women? Who are these women before you? We are the Black Ferns. Hear our rumble from hine ahu one, the first human-formed woman, from hine titama the daughter of Tane Mahuta and Hine Ahuone, from Hine Nui Te Pō, the guardian of the afterlife, we moved from the realm of darkness into the world of enlightenment. In the beginning of my becoming a leader, my energy was in the Hine Ahuone space. I was the firstborn of four girls. I was the first in my, un in my family to go to university. I tried to lead by example on and off the field and was praised for being conscientious. Like many trailblazers, I made many mistakes and often wanted to run away from my responsibilities. I felt all of the energy within me 
that was Hineahuone in 2016 when there was a vacancy on the New Zealand Rugby Board. New Zealand Rugby was under pressure to address the behaviour of male players towards women and to make a space for women at the table. Were there other women who were capable of filling that space in 2016? Of course, many women could have done this job and nailed it. I was probably considered a safe choice at the time as a conscientious female rugby head, and I was being courted. I knew that. Before jumping in, I sought counsel from women I respected around me. Most of them encouraged me to take that space, so I did. I really felt the timing was right, but oh where I was shit scared. I was trying to take it all in my stride until my whānau or family turned up at my very first New Zealand rugby meeting for a mihi whakatau, which is a formal welcome ceremony. They gate crashed a CEO and chairs forum full of predominantly white men. The moment my kuya or female elder took my arm and started to karanga or call as we walked into the room, I lost it. In that moment, I felt very loved and cared for and realised that I was not alone and that all my ancestors were there with me. I may have been the first, but I wouldn't be the only one and I wouldn't be the last. At other times, I felt like Hine Titama, the daughter of Hine Ahuone and Tane Mahuta. Like all daughters, we sometimes challenge, resist authority, push the boundaries, we're keen to learn, hungry for knowledge, impatient for change. We want to experiment and fail quickly and move on. When I was in the space of Hinititama, I needed wise counsel. I needed my tight five to tell me whether I was on the right track, should change tack, or just have a breather. I also learned to share the load and pass it back and started to give others opportunities to lead. Māori ki te rangi, me te whenua, ngā kapua, whakapipi, mai ngā maunga titia e, hi a ha ha. Gain life force from the sky or the heavens above and the earth below, and gain strength like clouds do when they gather over the tallest mountain, which represents the highest aspirations. So like gathering clouds, we formed collaborations and networks, and found a common purpose which gave us all the energy and will to carry on pushing, fending and tackling issues important to us. Type fives evolved into forwards who evolved into a first 15 and the players were made up of champions of, from Aotearoa and the world. Hetia, hetia, te moana nui a kiwa, mai ngā topito, ki ngā mautere, o te ao whanui e. Hi a ha ha, tu mai rā koe, te mana wahine, te whare tangata ngā mamaku o Aotearoa, hetia, hetia, he ranga, he ranga. We vigorously move in advance across the Pacific Ocean from the ends of New Zealand to the Pacific Islands and the whole wide world. Groups like WIRA, which is Women in Rugby Aotearoa, WISPA and IWG are like a ngaru, a wave, the energy behind it is powerful and we are expecting that wave to join us here in Aotearoa later on. That's my subtle promotion of the Rugby World Cup and of course the IWG World Conference on Women and Sport. But waves and energy can sometimes dissipate. In more recent times I felt the energy of Hine Nui Te Pō, a guardian or kaitiaki, in her case of the underworld or afterlife but in my case of rugby. In the five years I've been on the New Zealand Rugby Board, board I've gained a lot of wisdom. I've experienced major challenges from people and places I never expected it to come from, and I'm a bit bruised. It took time to heal, but at the core of my decision to carry on was the desire to transform the rugby system to make it a place that values women and Māori. Women in rugby are not just essential to the survival and thriving of the next generation of male rugby players. We should be valued as professional players, leaders, coaches, referees, advocates, executives, journalists, academics, critics and politicians. Māori are also heavily invested in rugby and tikanga Māori, Māori culture and our taonga, our treasures, are deeply woven into the whakapapa of rugby in New Zealand. How can we see more Māori in roles beyond that of the athlete and player that tends to be exploited? How can we ensure that our taonga are protected for generations to come? When I find myself in this space akin to Hine Nui Te Pō, I'm very quiet and still. 
I am tired and I need space to contemplate. There will, be, there will come a time when I need to move aside and let someone else take this leadership space. I look forward to that day and am already feeling reassured that there are more wahine who are ready to join the gathering cloud over the highest mountain. Tu mai rā koe, te mana wahine, te whare tangata o mamaku o Aotearoa, hetia, hetia. He ranga, he ranga, tūruki, tūruki, paneke, paneke. Hara mai te toki, haumi e, hui e, taiki e. You are all descendants of generations who have passed their wisdom on to you so that we can cooperate and collaborate and continue the voyage. Keep moving forward. Bring your tools with you. Gather, discuss, bind. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Tēnā tātou katoa. Kia ora. Oh, tēnā koe, Dr. Farah Palmer. Uh, just incredible address there, integrating Indigenous uh, insights uh, of the Māori culture and the wonderful uh, legacy that you leave and continue to live uh, through women's rugby. So you gave a, a subtle plug for the Rugby World Cup later this year. I'm going to come out and just do a, a straight plug. Um, no shame about it. I'm wearing my Rugby World Cup champions hoodie this morning. Uh, but I'm really excited to see the superstars of international women's rugby who will be facing off for the game's most prestigious prize, the Women's Rugby World Cup, as Dr. Farah Palmer mentioned, right here in Aotearoa in 88 days' time. Now, this is the second of four massive global events to come to Aotearoa, and it sits really nicely alongside the recently played ICC Women's Cricket World Cup, which was phenomenal, and the upcoming IWG World Conference, and leading on to next year, the FIFA Women's World Cup in 2023. Now, we have a once in a generation opportunity to help change perspectives about the value of women's rugby, both here and around the world. So on the opening match day on October the 8th, that, write that date down, please, at Eden Park, we are going to set a world record for attendance at a women's rugby match day. Now the time now the time is now, and we need everyone to stand up for the value of our wahine by purchasing a ticket and being part of that wave of change, which uh, Dr. Farah Palmer mentioned in her address. Now tickets are on sale for the Rugby World Cup to the general public. If you check the discussion forum now, uh, there'll be a link to buy tickets. Uh, it's just been posted there. Now, I actually bought some tickets to the opening match uh, the other day for my family and my mum. And it wouldn't be awesome if we could sell out Eden Park to kickstart the tournament and really make a statement of support for our wahine. Right, let's move on to our second speaker this morning, and that is Dr. Diane Culver. Now, Diane joins us from Canada today, where she is an Associate Professor in the School of Human Kinetics. With a PhD in Education, her domain in Sport Pedagogy and Psychology. Using social learning theory, Diane's research with sporting organisations, including those in Parasport and the Special Olympics, takes a participatory approach to building learning capability. Diane has been a member of the Research Committee of the Coaching Association of Canada since 2007 and also sits on the Alpine Canada Coach Education Curriculum Review Subcommittee. Her previous work experience includes coaching for the Canadian National Ski Team and the New Zealand Ski Team and being a senior coaching consultant for the Coaching Association of Canada. Today, she will be previewing the workshop that her group will, pre will be presenting at the upcoming 8th IWG World Conference in November. Kia ora and welcome, Diane. Thank you very much, Sarah. Can you hear me? Okay. So you're ready to be, for me to go ahead? All right. Okay. So kia ora, hello, bonjour, buenos dias. Uh, I would like to begin by acknowledging the land, Lake Manitou, from which I am addressing you today, which is on the unceded territory of the Algonquin, 
Huron Wendat, and Anishne and Abiwaki nations. The Algonquin people have lived on and cared for this land since time immemorial, and I am very grateful for the opportunity to work and play here. I am also extremely honored to present here and talk with you today about social learning and our work over the last two decades, as Sarah mentioned, learning, uh, building learning capability through using communities of practice and other aspects of Wenger Trainer's social learning theory. Learning capability is about learning to make a difference. And there's a double entendre here, which is very important, which is learning in order to make a difference, as well as learning how to make a difference. Uh, I'm particularly pleased that the IWG 8th conference organizers have decided to frame this conference in social learning. As you will hear shortly from Robin, there will be plenty of opportunities for you to engage with others who want to make a difference for women and girls in sport and physical activity in November at the IWG conference. I am using Mural, which is a software tool that we use often for co-creating and sharing knowledge, both for our in-person social learning spaces, as well as online and bimodal groups. So first of all, as, as noted by Farah, um, certainly social learning is all about the people, so we want to know who's in the room. So I won't say much more about myself than what Sarah said. Thank you. Um, however, yes, I am a dual Canadian New Zealand citizen, and I lived in Northern Southland for over a decade. Um, my colleagues who will be with me in November are Dr. Penny Werthner and Isabel Kaye, uh, both originally from Ottawa. Uh, Penny is Dean of the Faculty of Kinesiology at the University of Calgary, and Isabel is the Head of Sports Safety and Diversity at the Coaching Association of Canada. And our other two colleagues on this presentation are Carrie Din from Calgary and Aaron Kraft from Kingston, Ontario. So um, I'm trying to, I'm using Mural for a number of reasons. One is to just give you a taste of, this is an actual Mural page that I've doctored up um, for this purpose, but it is something that we used in a recent um, social learning space that we did entirely online line for um, high performance coaches around safe sport. So we usually begin by asking people, you know, who else is in the room? So we get them to um, put themselves on the map with a picture and maybe tell us something about themselves that we would like to know and that can help us um, to work collaboratively to create new knowledge. So I'll begin with a little bit of theory here, a couple of slides on what is a community of practice. And often it's helpful to look at some of the myths and misconceptions about something, and especially what misses it is, is not. <laughs> so um, there are a couple of myths that I'm gonna talk about. One is that everything is a community of practice. Um, actually, this is not true. Every social gathering is not a community of practice. So a team, a work task force, et cetera, is not a community of practice because in order for that to be so, we need a certain understanding of what social learning theory is and everything has to be based around the actual needs of the participants, their learning needs. Another myth is that communities of practice reproduce existing knowledge and practices. This is also not true. In order for a community practice to be an actual community of practice, we have to be moving ahead and changing, going beyond and the practices that we engage in every day. Um, so along with the idea that community practice are an easy solution is the fact that no, not really, it's an easy solution because you do need to understand the social learning theory, but they do not require a facilitator who is a master practitioner, rather they need a facilitator who understands social learning theory and has some of those social learning leadership skills, which we will talk about in November. So what actually happens? What do we do in the community of practice? This cartoon tells us a little bit about that. I'm gonna read you the cartoon and I want you to notice the arrows because really what's happening in a community of practice is that we are engaging in individual and collective periods of action and reflection. So we get together with other people who want to make a difference and we love being with those people who want to make the difference that I wanna make and as well who appreciate my uncertainty. I get ideas, tips, friendship, networks from this community, and then I take them back to my practice, put them into use, and pay attention to see what the effect is. And then I bring that effect 
back to the community and let my my community uh, member colleagues know how that went so we can see this cycle carries on of action and reflection a definition of a community of practice is something like this an initiative to connect people with a passion for learning developing and growing together related to their practice so we're all going to be in auckland in november because we care about women in sport um, and physical activity communities of practice of three very important concepts learning meaning and identity and in order to understand this we need to understand the basic assumptions underlying social learning theory first as human beings we are fundamentally social creatures and learning is at the core of our existence we are where we are now because throughout the millennium we have been able to learn co-create and actually survive um, through our interactions with each other as well as our interactions with the world the environment and in terms of identity i loved what farah said about becoming a leader as we learn we become so as long as we're learning we are continually becoming now just a little bit the next few slides i'm going to go through right quite quickly but i just want to give you a small taste of some of the activities that we might do in the social learning space so first of all there are a number of different leadership roles that can be distributed throughout the community members such as value detectives community keepers etc we will talk about more about that so that you can learn about being a social learning leader in november we usually start by asking people what keeps them up at night so essential to communities of practice is the fact that we are driven by the learning needs of the group not by some exterior curriculum so we might have a sort of a setup like this it's in person it could be post-its where we ask people that question what keeps them up at night who do they need to involve in the change they want to make and where might they start so caring to make a difference is actually the glue that holds people together and keeps them participating and being with others who care about the same topic is fun and in a normal community of practice, this will take place. And trust is built. The difference doesn't have to be huge. It can be small. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. The second element is paying attention. So we're paying attention to the value and the learning, the changes that are happening. We're framing activities in the hopes of being able to pay attention in that way so that we can tell a plausible story about how change is connected to social learning spaces. We also are happily engaging in that uncertainty that you saw in the cartoon. So we, we don't, you know, we're at the edge of our knowing and we don't know what the final destination is, which makes this a very excellent type of learning for the realities of the 21st century. And then finally, towards the end, we always have every session, we'll do a kind of checkout. So we might ask people what a takeaway is, what's something they might use in their practice between our meeting today and the next time. And we usually have some kind of a shared document, such as a Google Doc, where people can connect, put down their um, coordinates. So if other people want to communicate or be in touch with each other in between community of practice meetings, that's possible. So that's the end of my very quick introduction to our work with social learning. And I am so pleased that this conference has adopted this lens. And I'm sure that as you move forward today and also in November, you will really appreciate the opportunity to not just sit and listen, but to actually engage in some ways of and some future actions to change the situation for women and girls in sport and physical activity. Thank you very much. Oh, well, Tina, Kweer, Diane, I really love the quote that uh, someone has put up in the discussion forum. As we are learning, we are continually becoming. I think that's just a, a, a wonderful way to think about the process of learning. And thanks very much for joining us this morning. Now, Diane will, uh, will be speaking at uh, the IWG conference here in November. She's one of 
nearly 500 presenters and 220 sessions that will be running at the IWG conference. This is a fantastic opportunity for you to rub shoulders with a global network that are passionate about advancing women and girls in sport and physical activity. Now you can start to build your conference journey via the website where the core of the program is already live. So check out www.iwgworldconference.org and we'll put that link up in the chat too. Well, our final speaker for this morning is Robin Coburn and Robin has more than 25 years experience working as a consultant researcher, strategist, facilitator and educator. She's an absolute marvel. Her strategic leadership in the arts, sport, recreation and education sectors involves research, critical analysis and solution development. Now, Robin is an experienced governor across the arts, recreation and education sectors here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. She currently sits on the Sport New Zealand board. And in this session, Robin will take us under the hood of the upcoming 8th IWG World Conference, sharing about the co-design approach and the various initiatives that already set this edition of the conference apart from other previous secretariats. Thank you to you and your team, Robin, for all your mahi to date. Kia ora, tēnā kuia. Welcome, Robin Coburn. As you said, uh, what a privilege it is to be sharing um, this opportunity with you and my other speakers, introducing some of the features of the 8th IWG World Conference. In the next eight minutes, you'll get to understand some of the key design principles that we have woven through the conference. Uh, be clear about our development process and how we have built on the community of practice as part of our journey to uh, provide you with some really great insights into how you might enjoy the conference and uh, provide some more information about your in-person and online experience. We want you in both forms, uh, if at all possible. One of the key things that has been a really critical feature of our design process so far is that this is about change and and we've been inviting you and other people from around the globe to be part of this journey. Uh, our legacy is around building a global community of action and we've used that process as part of our design and it certainly will be a key feature of the conference and how is it structured. Our focus, as you're aware, is around girls and women in sport and physical activity and we are really wanting to create uh, an important um, milestone and change, making um, opportunities for future girls and women to have more equitable access and to enjoy success in those spheres. We've been talking quite a lot today about uh, the Indigenous frameworks that support this conference and one of the key concepts that we're going to be enjoying is the fact that we are linking our conference to Matariki. Matariki is the star cluster that many of you will know as the Pleiades. Um, uh, it's a very um, interesting cluster because it's about a mother and um, six daughters or sisters. And that sense of uh, multi-generationality and um, collective action, I think, is a really lovely parallel to the work that we're creating. One of the things about Matariki is that it is a predictor of good fortune and that it is um, a, a hallmark or a um, harbinger of positive change. And they are both things that we're really keen to have as an underpinning um, principle for our conference. In addition to those things, what else makes us different? Well, as uh, Sarah has already said, we have been working in a collaborative way. We've co-designed with 150 and more experts from around the globe to think about the key themes that are um, critical for us to um, address if we're going to be making change uh, for girls and women in this space and to be applying some contemporary lenses. And I'll talk about those briefly. 
we are incredibly excited about the fact that we have so many ex really interesting sessions and the number of presenters that we have had um, contribute to this. And we've got uh, a four day program that is absolutely jam packed. Our five themes are as follows. Uh, it's interesting listening to both Farah and Diane talk that concepts of leadership, um, performance and social change are so in, um, important. And uh, even Sarah encouraging us to go to the opening match of the Rugby World Cup is around acknowledging the importance of making women's sport visible and having a voice in these spaces. So um, our five themes are uh, part of the architecture of the conference. And we are having as part of these five themes, seven lenses that reflect some of the really uh, contemporary issues that are weaving through the um, girls and women in sport and active recreation space. I'm just going to talk about a couple of these uh, now, but we are going to be really having a very strong indigeneity focus. And uh, you will have already heard that and seen that in today's conversation. Uh, one of the things that we're also bringing through that is becoming an incredibly important area is around environmental sustainability. And we've got some very exciting work happening in terms of um, climate change. So uh, plenty of opportunities to do what Diane has been encouraging us to do. We've built social learning into our program and we've got a range of different ways that people will be able to engage in their learning. So uh, interactive workshops, we've got short lightning talks where we're um, pre-recording those and having the opportunity to engage with the presenter and a, a range of different experiential learning. We're going to be um, building the space uh, at the Aotea Centre with uh, opportunities for people to sit down and engage in what we're calling couch chats couch chat so you can go and um, uh, share a problem or um, find a solution or explore topics of interest. The other thing that we're going to be focusing on as part of our social learning is the opportunity for people to collectively come together around topics of interest or in groups uh, or tribes where they are wanting to belong. So um, talking further about our, um, our process, we're going to all the time ensure that sessions are well facilitated. They build opportunities for collaboration. There's a, um, a, a real emphasis on taking theory or evidence and putting it into practice. And we're wanting to generate insights from a range of different perspectives. One of the things that I'd like to highlight is the fact that we are really committed to uh, working in a way that honours our First Nations or Indigenous communities. And we are doing that here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And we've already heard from um, our uh, mana whenua at Ngāti Whātua Ōrake as part of the welcome for today. We have um, uh, designed an, um, an opportunity for First Nations women and men to participate in a specific um, off-site event hosted at the Marae um, at Ngāti Whātua Ōrāke. And we're really excited about the fact that we've already had uh, Indigenous delegations coming from Canada or, and Australia. So um, if any of you are uh, members of Indigenous communities and you would like to participate in that, uh, please be in touch with us. Very exciting opportunity. Let's talk uh, very briefly about your journey. So um, we've designed the program over four days. We're going to be rinsing through the themes and lenses over the days. We've got the range of different social learning experiences, but each day has a different focus. Day one is about you landing. Um, uh, everybody who comes to New Zealand comes uh, came either by boat uh, or more recently by um, by plane. But we do travel to get to New Zealand, and we do travel to come to a conference. So we want you to find a way of landing. And uh, by landing, we're also wanting to um, get you to be thinking about what it is 
that it is uh, what the, our legacy has been in terms of girls and women in the sport and um, physical activity space. What have we uh, developed over time? What are the current issues and um, concepts that we should be exploring? Day two is about blowing your mind. So what are the things that are happening in the world that are innovative, that are cutting edge? What's new? Who's got tools and resources that we can share with one another? Day three is an opportunity to start to reflect and take stock. What does this mean for me and my organization? And what might I start to do differently? So we've got um, workshop opportunities, opportunities to come together around topics and tribes. We've got um, plenty of chances for people to start to integrate their learning and thinking. And day four is about getting ready to launch. So you've had this amazing opportunity. Let's now be focused on action planning. How are you going to um, build your courage to head out and uh, create the change that inspires change? However you join, whether you're coming uh, by live streaming or um, in person, we will have facilitators that will be um, ensuring that you are engaged, that you have opportunities to interact, and that we are maximising your opportunity for learning. Um, we've got a range of different types I've talked about before, and we've got a whole lot of tools, and I'm hoping that you are enjoying some of the tools that the Events Air platform is providing already, and uh, you will get some opportunities to explore some of those a little after um, this morning's presentations. You want to know more? We've got information on, on uh, the website, uh, uh, tells you a little bit about the program at a glance and how we have shaped up the program. You can drill in by different topic types. So I've chosen here for an active lives lens. It will show you whether it's a virtual session or in person. And you can then uh, focus in more detail around individual sessions and who the presenters are. So what's stopping you? Um, if you haven't already done so, please register for the conference. Uh, the dates are 14 to 17 November. We really welcome you online. Uh, we will be making a real effort to engage you in a virtual space. And of course, for those of you who are lucky enough to come to Aotearoa, New Zealand, I look forward to meeting you in person, and if not, meeting you in a virtual context. Uh, thank you very much and uh, um, have a great rest of the session. Uh, tēnā kia, Robin. Uh, some incredible insights into the program there of the IWG conference. Uh, you don't want to miss it. And for me personally, I really liked the First Nations initiatives. And if you didn't know already, there are 50 Māori scholarships on offer, which are fantastic additions too. And I want to encourage everyone, especially those based in Aotearoa, New Zealand, to have a think about who they can support to apply for the Māori scholarships. Now, all the information and criteria can be found on the Women in Sport Aotearoa website. And we've added that link to the chat for you now. So in a moment, we're going to talk, we're going to open up breakout rooms as Robin's uh, played earlier, uh, for you to join a virtual workshop. Now you will have the choice of entering one of three workshops today based on the topics presented by each of our phenomenal marikura. Uh, you will be welcomed in by a lead facilitator who will explain how that workshop will be run. And the workshops will run for 20 minutes and I'll let you know closer to the end of your workshop when to return to the main room for the closing ceremony. So don't miss this opportunity. Head into your workshop now by leaving this window and going to your timeline and selecting your preferred workshop. I'll see you back here in 20 minutes. Enjoy. <laughs>